Hello, hello. So today the um, chat will be about XCO2 removal, uh, which place, uh, how to do it, uh, what are the problems, the issues, and uh, to discuss it, we have two specialists here. They don't need much introduction. Uh, we have Eddie Fan from Toronto. Hi, Eddie. And we have Alain Combe from Paris. Salut, Hello. Alain. Salut. The first question is obviously uh, XCO2 removal. It's a form of extracorporeal gas exchange, but it's not exactly the same as ECMO, right? So can you please tell us a little bit the, the differences very quickly to make sure we are all on the same page? Maybe Eddie first? Yeah, I mean, the main difference is, as the name suggests, the indication. Uh, ECOR is focused on CO2 removal, where ECMO includes CO2 removal and uh, oxygenation support. Because we're not concerned with oxygenation, ECOR systems can use much lower blood flows. That's one of the main differences. So as low as 200 to 300 mils per minute, up to maybe a liter, uh, liter and a half. And the equipment is often different. We have some you know, dedicated devices that are focused uh, just on ECOR that could attach to dialysis machines or purpose-driven uh, devices with low blood flow. Or you could use a full ECMO machine with the intent of just CO2 removal using much uh, lower blood flows than you would traditionally use for ECMO. So, uh, so the two main indications will be uh, potentially ARDS and hypercapnic respiratory failure. Perhaps we can consider these two indications successively. So in ARDS, can one expect some benefit from lowering tidal volumes further than what we do now to try to limit VILI? Is it the, the point, Eddie? Well, I think that's the hope and that's the physiologic rationale. I think the idea that lowering the intensity of mechanical ventilation further by lowering driving pressure or tidal volume with the use of ECOR could lead to benefits for patients. This, of course, was the hypothesis behind the REST trial that was recently co uh, completed and uh, presented in January. We're waiting for the publication. I think the challenge is, is that we still don't know how much to reduce mechanical ventilation to see a benefit. So in the REST trial, they did manage to reduce in the first few days with ECOR tidal volumes to about four mils per kilo, driving pressure below 15 and plateau pressure below 25. They did have to increase respiratory rate as a result of that. And there was actually no difference in outcomes. Mortality is actually slightly higher in the ECOR group, as well as uh, there were fewer ventilator-free days in the ECOR group. And there were, importantly, more adverse events in the ECOR group. So yeah. I think we, need to, we need to consider that um, in the future, thinking that maybe we need to reduce mechanical ventilation further, more intensely, to see a benefit and obviously use the safest device to achieve those goals. Do you believe, do you believe in that, Alain? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, the problem of the uh, REST trial is that it used the, one of the devices which has the lowest uh, efficiency at CO2 removal. And also, as we demonstrated in the uh, supernova pilot trial, the one which uh, was associated with uh, the highest rate uh, of complications. And when looking at uh, what was observed also from the supernova, the predictive and treatment strategies, uh, it's probably with the highest flow devices that's going to be possible to decrease the uh, driving pressure to a lower level. And if we believe uh, it's going to be the next uh, 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 index uh, to target uh, for future trials, uh, it's probably with the highest flow devices that we might uh, reach the target and the goal. Yeah, very good. And so if we move quickly to the, uh, we'll come back to that, but if we move quickly to the uh, hypercapnic uh, respiratory failure, decompensated COPD. Um, is it a totally different indication, Alain? Yeah, for sure, it's different indication, but it's probably easier for intensivists to understand what we're going to do with these patients because we're talking of patients who have baseline elevated PaCO2, which is not the case of the ARDS population we are targeted with these type of devices. Here, baseline PCO2 is over 65, 70, sometimes uh, even more than that. And the objective here is uh, to uh, uh, not to intubate uh, the patient. So we have to identify those patients at risk of uh, non-invasive mechanical ventilator failure, those who have uh, high PCO2, which does not decrease with an IV, those who have uh, persistent 
a, a use of excitatory muscles, respiratory muscles, uh, those who have a, a persistent low pH, uh, those who are really at risk of NIV failure, and those yeah. also who have been intubated because of failure uh, of NIV. And uh, the objective here is to extubate the patient very rapidly. Yeah, uh, you know, before Eddie intervenes, uh, I very much enjoyed your case report, basically, in the American Journal of Respiratory and uh, Critical Care Medicine just last week on this patient with COVID who was treated with ECMO, but to avoid endotracheal intubation. So I, I found it very interesting. It may be the future in many cases to avoid endotracheal intubation, but in this case, maybe to use simply uh, CO2 removal. What, what do you think, briefly? For patients with decompensated COPD, I, I believe there's clearly room for this type of strategy. It might be a little bit more difficult for ARDS patients because those patients have... Uh, strong respiratory drive, which might prevent uh, 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 going to intubation and sedation because of uh, uh, a tolerance uh, of uh, uh, the uh, extracorporeal strategy. Uh, those, that patient we did without intubation was very easy uh, with uh, uh, the tubes and the cannula, uh, and he did very well. He was able to ambulate. He was uh, uh, able also to rehab these patients very rapidly after uh, decannulation, which was not the case. This guy got one month of ECMO uh, and uh, just a, a simple uh, a pneumonia uh, due to uh, uh, pneumococci, uh, and he did very well. Uh, this clearly is the future, but we have to yeah, select yeah. the population of patients, and it's not that easy. Especially COVID patients, they cough uh, all the time. And in some yeah, 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 yeah. it was very difficult to go without intubation and sedation. Sure, sure. Eddie, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's, uh, as Alain said, promising in uh, the decompensated COPD patients where hypercapnia may be the main insult. I think in ARDS patients, it's very difficult. These patients, they're in the early phases, they're very uh, inflamed. They often have other associated organ failure. I think even putting them on ECOR or even full ECMO support, it's difficult to get these patients awake uh, and moving and extubated because of all these other associated problems. So we'll have to see perhaps in less severe ARDS patients, that might be the future of uh, uh, extracorporeal support to have an awake. And also the, the risks associated with the invasiveness of the, uh, of the procedure, risks of bleeding, uh, any hope for uh, regional anticoagulation to minimize the uh, risk of bleeding? Well, I think that would be ideal. I mean, I think the challenge, of course, is in, in ECMO, the blood flows are, rates are so high, it'll be very difficult to have regional antiquation. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm speaking about X, X CO2 removal it, now. Huh? Let's focus on Yeah, and CO2 removal, I think it's, it's possible, perhaps, with these lower flow devices to consider a regional anticoagulation uh, system. Um, but again, the trade-off there is, is that with lower flow devices, you're having lower efficiency CO2 removal. So the trade-off may be uh, not favorable for patients in that, in that regard. Alain, we spoke briefly about the different systems. So there are several machines available there. Should we try to choose the best one? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, there's basically it's two different types of systems. Those who are a downsizing of big ECMO machines and the other ones, which are uh, CRT machines, which have been uh, uh, customized to uh, provide CO2 removal. Uh, basically, ECMO machines, they run uh, around one liter per minute and the smaller ones around 500 ml per minute, something uh, around that. Uh, clearly, the higher the blood flow, the higher the CO2 removal. And uh, uh, also we saw in our uh, uh, supernova trial that there were probably less complications with the higher flow machine because probably less need for anticoagulation. And the lower the flow, the higher the need for anticoagulation. So this is a paradox here of uh, this uh, strategy. And uh, we may have in the coming uh, years uh, machines with uh, biocompatibility, which may allow uh, for lower anticoagulation. But uh, for now, we're stick stuck with this uh, need for high anticoagulation in a core. Yeah. With associated complications, of course. Yeah. Eddie, the costs are also an issue? Uh, cost is definitely an issue. I think, you know, these machines uh, and devices uh, are, are likely more costly uh, for centers than uh, mechanical ventilation alone. So we definitely need to see uh, efficacy in clinical trials before we can approach cost effectiveness. So first thing, efficacy, then cost effectiveness. But we'll have to demonstrate that these benefits of 
uh, reducing intensity, improving outcomes, and maybe having awake uh, and mobile patients, uh, they're cost effective in that uh, context. So you, you are introducing uh, an interesting comment. So perhaps it's not the mortality that we should target, but other endpoints. Uh, Alain, what do you think? Yeah, sure. It's very interesting uh, work from uh, the University of Toronto a couple of years ago about uh, what might be uh, a future outcome uh, evolution for those patients and uh, the quality of life six months, one year uh, after uh, uh, ARDS uh, might be even better uh, for the evolution of uh, strategies during the stay in the ICU, that mortality. Uh, we don't know what those patients uh, uh, become after uh, several weeks and months uh, post ICU. So this probably is very interesting. And it was able to reduce uh, the number of patients to be included in those trials with uh, these uh, uh, other types of uh, endpoints. Very interesting, my good friends. Our time is up already, but you know I would have liked to continue this. But thank you very much. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you later. I hope physically, <laughs> face to face. Ciao, ciao, bye. Bye, bye.